Hello everyone, this is the second video update on the new text container for TextMesh Pro. Now what is this new text container? Well basically it's a, a container that defines the area or the space in which the text will live. Now why create such a container? Well basically because it will give us better control over the text itself in terms of alignment. It gives us the ability to add a new thing called margins that will become very handy uh, when we're doing uh, masking or clipping in the text, as well as a really nice new feature, which is the auto sizing of the text to fit the container itself. Now, this uh, new text container uh, is a component that we can see right here. Uh, we can basically define its width. So if I was to go 60, that's the width of it, and 30 in height. Um, we can define that as opposed to a transform being just a point in space. Now this container has width and height. And then we can define the margins themselves. Now, um, if I was to resize this container, for example, you can see that the word wrapping is affected by uh, this container. And I can drag basically any of the points there. Let me hit undo. Uh, the margin itself controls where the text lives inside the container. So if I change the margin, you can see that that affects where the text is positioned. Okay, undo again. Now, in the previous version of TextMesh Pro, you had this yellow rectangle, which essentially represented the line length, um, but it had no effect on text alignment. So now with this text container, when we choose like left alignment, center alignment, now we're aligned in between the margins themselves, right aligned, we're right here, and then if we choose uh, justified, you can see that now the text is justified on either side of the margin itself. Going back here, now we have top alignment, uh, middle, and basically bottom, and those are some of the features that you get um, with this new text container. Now the next key feature is this auto sizing that I talked about. So right now it's disabled. So if I was to turn on auto sizing, we can see that by default the font is 36 point size. We have a minimum and a maximum. So if I was to enable it, it will automatically scale the text to fit the container. So if I zoom out to show you uh, what's gonna happen is if I shrink the size, uh, I'll shrink it from here. So if I shrink the size, of the container, you can see that the text itself shrinks and it will shrink up to the minimum, which is 18 points, at which point it will stop shrinking the text. And this is where masking or clipping or ellipses would show up. Now the opposite, uh, if I was to increase the size of the text, then you'll see eventually it gets to 72 point in size and it stops scaling up. So this is a pretty cool feature. Um, that is made possible because of this new text container. So uh, as a side note, the functionality shown here with this text container, my plan is to mirror it uh, when Unity 4.6 is released with the new Rec Transform and UGUI. So with UGUI, instead of using this text container, we're gonna be using the Rec Transform and we should be able to provide the same exact functionality. Uh, so now let's move on to look specifically at behaviors of this new uh, text container, uh, which is the various things that I need feedback on. So let me uh, make this object go away. And here I have a simple game object um, to which I've attached a script. Let's take a look at the script. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we basically have a string uh, or a label defined. Uh, we, uh, in a way, create a new text mesh pro component and then uh, as this text container is automatically attached, we basically get a referen reference to the text container. And basically in start right now, we do nothing. So let's take a look at what happens when we create a text mesh pro object and we do nothing. So at that point, as we would expect, let me shrink this down. By default, we created the text mesh pro object. We didn't give it any text. The container was added. And by default, the default width is 30, the height is 20, and then we have our margins. So this is what we expect here. Now, if we were to go in here and specify a width for the container, well, as you would expect, the container would now, let me zoom out, this container would now have a width of 60, still no text because we didn't define any. Um, and basically that's, you know, I guess 
what we would expect. I'm not going to go over height because it will do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to select texture. Now, when you add a text or provide text to uh, Text Mesh Pro, at that point, the behavior is that we scale the container to fit the text. Um, it would be kind of hard. I'm not sure it would make sense to use the default size of 30 by 20, which are meaningless. Uh, so whatever text you supply, now it's auto fit to um, the size of the text. Okay. Now, if I was to specify a width in addition to the text, then my assumption is if you, since you bothered defining a width, then I guess the container should have that width. But vertically, in terms of the height, since you never specified it, we still match the size of the container to the height of the text itself. Okay. Now, if we were to specify just a height, then the container would basically have the height that we specified and basically the text. Um, you know, obviously, we didn't turn on auto scaling, so nothing happens to the height of the text, but the box is the height that we specified, but in this case, the width, again, matches the width of the text. The next is the behavior of if we turn on auto sizing. Well, auto sizing, when we define no width and no height, well, basically nothing should happen to the object, which is we still get the container to fit the text. Now, if we go in here and we define a width, then the text will be scaled to the width. So now instead of a 36 point size, we get a 48.5. And then in terms of the height, we basically match the size or, or the height of the text. Okay. Now the same behavior, you know, I guess now you can predict what's going to happen. So if I choose size of nine for height, now the text is scale to nine, which is nine here, and nine in terms of width puts us just shy of our maximum of 72. We're at 71.25 point size. But again, we're using the height that we specified. We auto scaled up to that height, and then the width, basically the box, the container matches it. Then the next and last behavior to look at is if we turn on word wrapping, along with auto sizing. Then here, once again, since we didn't specify anything, we said, yeah, we want auto wrapping, we want auto sizing, but you know, we didn't say width or height, then we're still matching the size of the container. And then when we start putting in a width, now we're going to see that the word wrapping, the words get scaled as big as they can to fit everything in this area. And same thing again, if I was to uh, move around, well, we're already at 72, but if I'm to squeeze this around, we can see that the auto sizing is happening. So this is uh, basically it for, for this video. Um, things that need to be added right now is um, just the, the masking needs to be added to this component. Um, and basically treatment for the ellipses and truncating of lines. But other than that, it feels pretty good. Uh, no doubt there are some bugs here and there, but there's going to be a beta available uh, for people to play with and to uh, get us some feedback. So thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please uh, feel free to post. Thanks.